Hello. It's an EQ5 mount. Um, this is uh, a really old EQ5 mount, which I bought about a year ago. And it's been a bit of a labour of love, bringing it up to a standard where um, it's kind of usable. Um, this is, I, I, what, I, what I did when I bought it, I basically um, had to replace a few other bits and bobs. It was, it was super cheap, it was only 35 quid, um, uh, just for the, the mount here. And um, uh, I kind of documented a few bits that we put on, such as uh, the different motors. I had to replace the, um, the saddle because the saddle was cracked on the previous one. And also the uh, threads on the latitude bolts that was uh, threaded and needed to be replaced. Also, these these bolts were um, bent as well, so they had to be replaced. Um, and generally, the whole thing needed to be serviced and taken down and stripped apart. Um, and I also needed some tripod legs for it, which I managed to obtain as well. Um, one really good way of getting kit for astronomy is to look for second hand, particularly at the moment because it's really difficult to get hold of. Um, uh, good mounts and good telescopes uh, because of the COVID situation so it's really tricky to be able to get hold of stuff. So about a year ago I started this story and um, now I've got a really good usable mount. Um, it also has a go-to system built in as well and it has guiding so um, yeah it's a really useful little mount and um, so this is what I did to fix it. So here we go and cue lockdown haircut. So basically this um, all the parts arrived for this during uh, lockdown and I hadn't had a haircut for ages. So I'm just removing um, one of the motors which uh, although later on I do an unboxing um, so we've got slightly weird time travel going on here. So this is when I put the motors on I decided that the different axes needed a good service. So the main thing was to dismantle the whole of the mount and this is just one of the axes, which I decided to dismantle and then clean all of the grease. They're really simple to take apart and there's loads of really good videos on YouTube that explain exactly how you do it. The main thing about it is to be seriously methodical. And the one thing with an old mount like this is that it will be filthy. It'd be really, really dirty. And all of the old grease inside will have got solid. So um, I decided to strip the mount down and you have to use a special lens uh, removal tool to do that. I got to this point and I suddenly realised that I would need uh, the customary old sock in order to clean all of the bits. Um, so the actual bearing housing, which is that one there, um, was cleaned out with uh, an old sock and then I wiped off all of the grease and so on that was, um, that was actually on the mount. The main part of this is to remove all of the old grease and uh, one really good way of doing this is using WD-40 because it actually acts as um, a solvent and you can basically clean all of the old grease, it just dissolves the grease um, but you just have to make sure that when you use it um, you don't use it as a lubricant because it is hopeless as a lubricant. It's really good as a water displacer and as a cleaning agent. Um, but it's not very good as a lubricant. You need proper uh, grease for this. Now, the mount only cost me £35, so I wasn't going to then spend an absolute fortune on um, really specialised grease. So for this exercise, I just used standard engineering grease, which you would be able to get in a, a, a normal DIY shop, really. Uh, so once I cleaned all of the individual components and uh, got them looking really, really clean, I was able to uh, use an old toothbrush just to clean out all of the teeth and inspect for any damage. Um, and using, again, WD-40 as a solvent just works a treat. It's really good in the comp. And you can see already how much cleaner that particular bearing housing is. Um, these little tiny shims are super important. You've got to make sure that they're, um, they are basically the spacers which are to go uh, in between all of the different parts of the um, all of the different parts. So it's really important that you clean them carefully. They do come up really well. And um, and the next step was to make sure that all the threads were super clean and that anything had, that had got some old grease on it uh, was then cleaned out properly. Uh, so again, just simply using WD-40 to clean up the actual mount itself. 
This was the declination axis, which I cleaned out. The right ascension axis is slightly harder than this because it has some large bearings. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to video that part, but it is super well documented on the internet, on YouTube, how you can dismantle an EQ5 Pro. So the next step after I had done all of this was to check all of the parts were in good condition and then to reassemble the actual mount itself. So you can see here I'm just trying to test fit parts um, and without any grease they don't go together very well at all. So the next step was to get some proper industrial grease out um, which is what we've got here and then use that. Now it's really important that you use a really good quality grease which can cope with very low temperatures because if your mount is going to be used in the garden particularly at, at night uh, on a cold winter's evening you don't want the grease to go really really stiff so copious amounts of grease in the right places works an absolute treat to get the mount properly assembled again and you can see here i'm being really careful with how i'm putting the grease on not to put it in the wrong places it was so tricky to be able to fit the actual main bearing back onto the mount that in the end I had to use a small rubber hammer to do this. Now you have to be very careful to make sure that you're not doing any damage to the mount at all. Um, I was being really gentle and of course using the customary sock not to cause any damage and to absorb any of the taps. And th this particular hammer has a very soft rubber compound to make sure that the, it, it wouldn't cause any damage at all. So you just have to make sure that uh, you take your time and you do it really, really gently. And it was at this point I realised I couldn't actually remember what was going on. Um, so I had to go back onto YouTube just to make sure that I'd got the order of assembly absolutely correct. Once the declination had been um, uh, reassembled, uh, loads of grease in the right places to make sure that it was all going back together properly and then using the lens removal tool again to screw it up. You can also adjust the tension of it by setting the bearing at the end and there's a tiny little grub screw which you tighten up on each side um, to ensure that it doesn't come loose at all. So that's the declination axis pretty much reassembled. So um, the next step was to reassemble the uh, saddle and also put the actual worm screw back on as well so that it was all properly reassembled. So now I'm just checking the slow motion control to make sure that it's really smooth and that I've got the um, actual worm thread properly set up on the mount. Um, in reality this takes a long time and it's quite a difficult job to do uh, with lots and lots of different adjustments until you get it very really fine-tuned. Uh, basically adjusting the all of the different grub screws and with Allen keys until you've got the smallest amount of play in the meshing of the worm gear and then once you're happy it's just a question of uh, making sure that it's properly adjusted so that you don't have any play in the motion um, from the slow motion controls. So that's the declination now reassembled so it was now just a question of cleaning up and refitting the motors and of course as it was the kitchen table and I didn't want to be shouted at um, you have to clean up and make sure that you don't leave a mess behind you. So uh, yeah, gave the place a really good clean.